everybody. I've been asked several times how to paint skulls. These are some skulls that I have found in the woods um, shed hunting. And I've been asked several times exactly how I paint my skulls. So I'm going to do this video to show you how I use spray paint to paint shells to create um, a really cool design. The first thing I want to tell you that you need to do is you need to wash your skull. Um, you need to start with a clean skull. So what I do is I get a plastic bucket, just anything small. I fill it with soapy water, put some dish soap in it, um, and a toothbrush. And I go, I usually submerge it, but I usually go all over it and I clean it. Um, you need to get into all the crevices. You can see that there's a lot of crevices. Um, and then I just scrub it and rinse it. And then I put it in the sun to dry overnight. And that's pretty basic. That gets your bugs and everything out of it. I usually don't scrub too hard on the teeth just because they're fragile, they're loose, and you don't want them coming out. I, I mean, unless you do. I like to leave my teeth in. Um, so, after they've dried, I usually get spray paint. And my favorite is the Krylon. It's paint and primer. And I usually get it in several different colors. Usually my favorite. Um, Then what I normally do first is I put a base coat on. Now I'm going to show you how I do that. This one is satin almond and that's the one I usually use because I like the color of it so well. You can use white. I didn't bring my white out here. But just some base coat, some neutral color is good. And I usually put my skulls in the rocks because the grass um, doesn't get on them. You can do it on cardboard. You can do it wherever you want, but I usually, um, and the wind's blowing this way, so I'm probably going to move everything over here. I think my little groundhog just showed itself. Anyway, what I normally do is I just kind of get ah. I just kind of spray gosh we need like just put this over here a little bit. don't want to put a whole bunch on to where it runs. Um, I usually put a couple of light coats on. And then I usually let it dry for a few minutes. And while it's drying, um, want to make sure you get on the underneath side as well. And so normally what I do, I just, this usually doesn't take very long to dry. So I usually just turn them upside down. my little groundhog over there. He's my little buddy. He's in the red shed behind me. And you want to make
make sure you get a good you want to make sure you get a good coating on it for your first coating. And then you can let that dry. Some of my favorite colors while that's drying, I'll just tell you. Um, there's sun gloss yellow. Um, these come in gloss and um, matte. I like, well, both, really. We've got satin sea glass. There's gloss mambo pink is one that I use a lot. Um, Satin Island Splash is another that I like. Normally beachy, happy, bright colors. But I always use black because black seems like it always accents them. So I always try to put a little black on them. And it's okay if it's not completely dry because you are going to be getting it wet. So I'm going to start with probably this one. We'll let this little guy dry over here. And depending on the wind, let's see. Okay. So normally you just want to start with the color. Doesn't matter what color you start with. Um, I'm going to start with yellow. And you just randomly spray it. You don't do layers. You just randomly It. Let's see. You might throw on some pink. And you just put it in places. on what color you want is to be your dominant color. Um, and what I love about doing it this way is that you never get the same pattern, you never get the same theme. Um, it's always different. colors, all the colors. Um, I usually just layer them. Because sometimes like if you have your yellow and your blue, you know, you'll get a, a green, a funky green and you don't even have to have, um, don't even have to have that, that color in your, in your palette. see it, but it's coming together and it looks kind of like um, a rainbow. See if you just splatter it. And then sometimes what I like to do is I like to like push the button really slow because it makes like a, like a um, drops, raindrops kind of. Which is kind of cool. But make sure that you get inside. Make sure you get inside the crevices. and it dries, you can turn it over. And um, that's why it's always a good idea to get the bottom side some really cool color or just something that you want. Um, this is really fun. It's kind of um, therapeutic in a way, but 
Now, if you want, if you want to add that touch, and sometimes I like to do it right on the tips of where the nose is. This was a deer skull, a doe skull that I found in the woods, and so it was pretty well eaten on, but you can kind of like maybe spray the eye holes a little bit, spray them black. To give it that um, that look. And really what you do is just let that dry. Um, and I normally put a, a coat of Krylon uh, gloss over the top of it, but this one looks like something was chewing on it, which is kind of cool because you can't see it, but when it's dry, I'll show it to you. Um, it's got chew marks on it, which is really kind of cool. But if you can see the bottom, it's still um, this. And so if, As you can see, it's coming together nicely, um, and each one is its own. So you kind of just play around with it until you get the look that you want. I could do this all day and change it up. while this one dries. Now, this one definitely has no nose on it. So it's going to be, I'm probably going to focus on this part right here, probably with the black. But I think this time we're going to start on the bottom. Since I didn't on that one, we're going to start on the bottom. And actually, I think I might just put another coat of the satin almond on the bottom. Just to let it dry a little bit. Looks like it's blowing over to this one right here. Let's see. And we might do the same to this one a little bit. him down to dry. And when you do it on the rocks, it doesn't really matter because um, they usually dry pretty well and pretty fast. I might just go ahead and we're going to let him dry a minute. Um, always make sure that you do it in a ventilated area because it's messy first off. Um, you want to have good ventilation because you're breathing in fumes and they'll make you sick. So I usually do it outside and it's not windy today. Um, it's a perfect day actually for doing this. So after we've done the back, then we're going to decide on what we want. And um, I think I might try a black one and then put the colors on top of it. So we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to paint it. I'm going to start off with the base coat is black, which I've never done this before, so this will be new. And I'm just going to 
Remember, don't put so much on that it drips because you don't want them to drip. So I'm going to start him off with just black. And like I said, I've never done a black one. We're going to start off with the base coat. Um, we had the primer coat, which was our satin almond. Um, that gives a good base color. And then I think, I think I might want to do some pink. So, we're going to move this guy back over here a little bit because he's, he's getting the after effects. And one of the downsides to doing it outside is that sometimes you might get dirt in them. If you do, just take something and, and you get it out. But this guy's drying for right now. So we're gonna put out good for me because I don't have purple but you just want to make sure that you get every little crack that you can um, with at least some kind of paint in it now I am going to where's my black I'm going to put some more black. just have to see where exactly and sometimes what I do when I'm outside is I might use my surroundings around me and make something to prop it up A little bit so that you can get the underside. I've taken some sticks and propped it up. And I wish I had my white because I would probably put a little bit of white on top of that. I don't really know if I should add anything else. Um, I kind of like the black and the pink. Now, when you're looking at it, you might see some places that probably need some paint. So, you can let it dry, um, tip it on its side, and then work from there, which is what I am going to do. I think I am going to... Take the black. Maybe 
throw in some more paint. Let that dry on that side. Now, if we go back to this guy, um, I think he looks pretty cool the way he is. I might work on the back a little bit because I think the back just might need a little bit more paint. But, or maybe the eye sockets might need some. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy with him. And um, I don't have it out here, but I will put a coat of the, um, the, gl the gloss, the Krylon gloss. So anyway, that's how you do it. Very simple. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions, let me know. Send me a message on my YouTube channel or message me at my email address on my website at runningdough.com. Anyway, thank you and have a great Sunday. Bye.